My second book, The Original Names, Words and Everything in Between of Volume 2 is now available to purchase. Get your copy today by searching Word Origins Book on Amazon and clicking on the non-sponsored link or by checking whatever books are available in your part of the world. The island nation of New Zealand is split into 16 regions to help administer the land more easily. However, this does not mean that we'll be covering just 16 names in this video. How is this possible, I hear you asking? Well, this is because of the mixture of names these regions have, which fundamentally boils down to the history that has taken place on these islands. New Zealand in the grand scheme of the world is a very young country, at least as a human settlement anyway. In fact, it was the last large livable area of land to be discovered by us humans. And the first settlers to discover these lands were of course the Maori. It's believed they arrived on the shores of New Zealand somewhere between 1200 to 1300 AD, maybe a little bit after too. While this is a long time ago, it is still pretty recent in human history terms. Over in Europe, for example, Western Rome had been and gone and we were well into the Middle Ages. These initial Maori settlers developed their own culture, language and names for the land, many of which are still in use to varying degrees to this day. New Zealand stayed as a Maori only island for quite some time, all the way up until the mid 17th century. It was in this year that the first Europeans visited, that being the Dutch led by one Abel Tasman. However, he did not get the ball rolling on European settlement on the island. That happened much later on in the 18th century, when the British led by one James Cook started to settle in New Zealand. And from here, European names started to sprout up around the land, taking over even native names in some cases. The history the nation has faced has left New Zealand with names from various languages and cultures, from native Maori names to names given by European settlers. This can be seen very clearly in the names of the regions that New Zealand's North and South Island have been split up into. Many of the names these regions have are incredibly exotic sounding to a native English speaker like myself, with equally interesting meanings. Some of the other names these regions have, however, well, they leave very little to the imagination. Some of New Zealand's regions names even give the states of Australia a run for their money, and long term viewers will know how I feel about those names. Not all hope is lost however, as thankfully for the name inclined like ourselves, these dry names from European settlers are not the only names that these regions have been branded with, as each region has a native Maori name too, so even if its primary name is not of Maori origins, it still has one. Of course what I did just say was of note too, calling the European names to these regions the primary names is definitely a debate we can have another time and it seems like a lot of people are already having that debate in the nation. There's even rumblings of dropping the name New Zealand altogether. Like I said that really could be a video unto itself. Anyway, this is why I said at the top of this video that despite there being just 16 regions, we have more than 16 names. It's more around 29 names we'll be covering today. So let's find out where exactly the names for these regions came from. And apologies for my Maori pronunciation on this one. I shall, as always, do my best to find out how to pronounce these names properly. Forvo is my guiding light in all this. But sometimes my dumb tongue just can't quite comprehend words it's not familiar with. Starting in the north of the North Island, we have the region of Northland. I did warn you some of these names leave little to the imagination. This name comes from the fact that this land is in the northernmost part of New Zealand. This region's Maori name of Te Tai Tokaru is much more interesting sounding, though from what I can gather, this name seemingly means the same thing. I have seen it translated as meaning just the north, but Wikipedia also claims that it means the north tide, which is just a tad more poetic. We then arrive at the region of Auckland, named for the city of Auckland within it. This name ultimately comes from the area of Auckland in County Durham in the UK, which has a name coming from obscure Old English origins. This area ended up having an earl, that being one George Eden, the first Earl of Auckland. He was also the vice of India and allowed one William Hobson to explore the East Indies. It was during these travels he arrived in New Zealand and claimed land there, naming it Auckland in owed to the Earl that financed and helped set up his travels. The region's Maori name is Tamaki Makulao, meaning the Tamaki of a hundred lovers. It was of one hundred lovers as the land and its natural resources were loved and desired by many. As for Tamaki, we don't seem to be too sure. This unto itself is seen as the Maori name for Auckland, and I also read it may come from the Maori word for battle. Perhaps people thought of the resources this land boasted. Then we have the region of Waikato. This is obviously a Maori name. The first part of this 
name means water and the latter part means pearl. The name is seen as meaning the water's pearl. This name comes from the Tainui Maoris, a confederation of various Maori tribes in this region. When these people arrived in this land, they were drawn there by the strong pools of the waters they sailed on. This is because they arrived at the mouth of a river. It was this strong pull of water that gave this region its name. The Bay of Plenty is a rather unique name. We don't often see the word plenty being used like this. Normally it comes before another noun, but here it is seemingly as the main noun. What exactly is there plenty of in this Bay of Plenty anyway? Well, this name comes from a story that took place here when James Cook first arrived. When landing, the people already there were incredibly generous to Cook and his crew, giving them lots of food and supplies like timber. There was plenty of goods to go around. So in owed to this generosity, Cook dubbed this area the Bay of Plenty, as there was plenty to go around. This region's Maori name of Te Moana Atoi means the Sea of Toi, with Toi being an early Maori settler in this region. The region of Gisborne has a name deriving from the largest city within it, and this city was named after one William Gisborne, a former colonial secretary of New Zealand. The region's Maori name is Te Taiwawiti, which means the coast on the sunrise and this name comes from the fact that this is the easternmost point of New Zealand, so would be the first to see the sunrise, giving Japan a run for its money. The Hawke's Bay region of New Zealand is once again named by James Kirk. He named it after Admiral Edward Hawke, an important figure in the Royal Navy and James Cook's boss. The region's Maori name is Te Matau a Maui, which means the fish hook of Maui. This all relates to the creation myth of New Zealand and the hook the legendary Maui used to drag the island up from the sea. The region of Taranaki is in the west of New Zealand's North Island. This region is named after the huge Mount Taranaki, a dormant volcano. This is of course a name of Maori origins, though at first glance it's a very Japanese looking name. It seems I'm not the only one to notice this similarity between Japanese and Maori either, but that could be a video for itself another time. This name of Taranaki comes from Maori words meaning peak and shining respectively. This is because of the snow-covered peak on this mountain, shining in the sun. The region of Manawatu Huanganui has just that Maori name, but it's one of interest. The first part of this name derives from an old Maori song about an early Maori ancestor searching for his wife. In part of this song, he says his heart stopped when he found the river. The Maori words for heart and stop are Manawa and Tatua, respectively. These words made up the first part of this name. The latter part of this region's name is thought to either mean the long wait or the big harbour, which could even a reference to Mari in the song waiting to find his wife or just the bay in this region. It's a very unique name that's for sure and this may be the first time I've covered a place named after a song lyric. Then we arrive at the southernmost region of New Zealand's North Island, that being the region of Wellington, named of course after the city within it, the nation's capital of Wellington. This city is named after one Arthur Wellesley, aka the first Duke of Wellington. It was this same duke that the boots are named after too. There seems to be a couple Maori names for this region. The one I shall be covering here today is Te Huanangi Atala, which means the Great Harbour of Atala, with Atala being another legendary Maori figure. We now arrive in the South Island of New Zealand, which despite being much larger is a lot less populated, meaning it's split into less regions. To start with, on this island we have the region of Tasman, named after a certain someone we mentioned near the start of this video. Abel Tasman was the first European to sight the land, hence how his name ended up here. The region's Maori name is Te Tai Olea, and I'm afraid to say I couldn't figure out what exactly this name means. I tried researching it myself and even trying to translate the individual words in English, but no luck. If you have a better understanding of Maori, then please do let myself and others know down in the comments below. I'm sure there's just something super obvious I missed with this one. Hello, so I'm actually currently in the process of editing this video. Look, there it is in iMovies, because I use iMovies to edit my videos, because that's just how I am. Um, I was really annoyed with myself about what I said in that one, saying I don't know where it's come from. So I actually decided to pull my finger out and look into it, because I think it's a bit more obvious I was being a bit lazy and dumb when I first did that. So the uh, first part of this name must mean the bay, because it means the bay in other uh, names, which I've already mentioned, which I'm going to mention in the rest of this video. So I reckon that means the bay. I was just too lazy to try and clock that when I was first writing this video, because I'm very tired. 
always tired. And that's for the latter part, there's no the RAL part, if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm still not 100% sure on that. That seems to be a name that pops up in other parts of New Zealand. From what I can gather, there's a school with this name. But there's also a river with this name, the Areo River, if I pronounce that right once again, in this part of the country. So it must mean the bay of this river. As to how this river got its name in the first place, not entirely sure. I'm going to go back to editing this video. Anyway, the region of Nelson seems to be composed primarily of just the city with that same name. Nelson in New Zealand is named after Admiral Horatio Nelson, the famed British sailor who defeated both the French and Spanish at the Battle of Trafalgar. The city's Maori name of Whakatui simply means build slash raise, relating to the homes the natives used to build here. The Marlborough region is another region named after a noble of some sort, this time being the Duke of Marlborough, John Churchill. Its Maori name is Tietahui Otiwaka, relates to the myth of Maui once again, meaning the prow of his canoe. This all comes from the myth of this island being his canoe. As we travel down the south of the island, we arrive at the region on its west coast, called the West Coast region. Easy to figure out, I know. Its Maui name is Tietai Putini, which means something along the lines of the coast of Putini, with Putini being another legend of Maori mythology. Canterbury is the most populated region in the South Island. This name ties, of course, to the city of Canterbury in the UK, specifically with the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was John Bird Sumner at this time. The Archbishop of Canterbury is a pretty big deal, hence why it is named after him. The Maori name of Wataha seems to come from the name of a historic Maori tribe of the same name that once lived in this part of the nation. The region of Otago has a name of interest because this name and its Maori name of Otaku are one and the same. The former is just its anglicization. This name ultimately comes from a small village in the region and is believed to be an isolated village or place of red earth. Finally, we reach our last region. Remember how the first region we covered was called Northland? Well, this one is called Southland, as it's the southernmost land on the southern island. Its Maori name of Molihiku means pretty much the same thing, translating to the tail end of the land, which is pretty fitting, as this is the tail end of this video. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.